Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of metals and their remarkable properties. Our focus turns to the high thermal conductivity exhibited by metals. Have you ever wondered why metals feel so cold to the touch in winter? Well, it's because of their unique property of conducting heat exceptionally well. This property is closely tied to the presence of mobile electrons within metals. These electrons can move freely in response to temperature differences, allowing them to carry kinetic energy swiftly throughout the solid structure. Imagine these electrons as tiny messengers of heat, ensuring that warmth travels efficiently within the metal. As we continue, remember that the movement of electrons plays a pivotal role in shaping the behavior of metals. Welcome back. Hello again, students. Let's explore another captivating aspect of metals their remarkable ability to be shaped and stretched. Have you ever wondered how thin sheets of metal can be bent and formed into various objects? This is due to the metal's property of malleability and ductility. These characteristics stem from the way metal atoms are connected within their lattice structure. Metal atoms are friendly neighbors. They form bonds with multiple neighboring atoms, creating a robust network. When we reshape metals, the atomic positions change, and this is where our trusty electrons come into play. A redistribution of electrons helps accommodate these changes, allowing the metal to maintain its structure while undergoing deformation. It's truly a dance between electrons and atoms that gives metals their amazing properties. Hello again. Welcome back, students. As we explore the wonders of molecular orbital theory, let's Zoom in on a specific phenomenon, the extension of molecular orbitals across entire molecules. This extension is particularly significant when it comes to metals. The unique ability of molecular orbitals to stretch out and envelop the entire molecule gives rise to intriguing bonding properties in metals. This phenomenon is at the heart of what we call metallic bonding. Picture it as if the electrons within these extended orbitals are shared across a sea of metal atoms, creating a cohesive structure with remarkable properties. It's these properties that make metals good conductors of electricity and heat. So, remember, the way molecular orbitals spread their influence plays a pivotal role in the fascinating world of metallic bonding. Let's keep exploring. Welcome back. Hello, dear students. We're now going to delve into a crucial aspect of molecular orbital theory. The electron capacity of these molecular orbitals. Remember, each molecular orbital can accommodate either 0, 1, or 2 electrons. Understanding how these electrons occupy the molecular orbitals is key to comprehending the properties of molecules and materials. When an orbital has a single electron, it's unpaired and can lead to distinct chemical behavior. On the other hand, when an orbital houses two electrons with opposite spins, they form a stable pair. This pairing significantly influences molecular properties. So, as we continue our journey, keep in mind that the electron arrangement within molecular orbitals shapes the characteristics of the substances we encounter in our world. Let's press on. Hello, dear st Great job, everyone. Let's take a moment to summarize what we've learned so far in our exploration of molecular orbital theory. We've grasped the idea that atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbitals, which can span an entire molecule. These molecular orbitals play a significant role in bonding, especially in metals. We've also understood that a molecular orbital can hold either zero, one, or two electrons, influencing the substance's properties. As we wrap up this section, Remember the importance of molecular orbital theory in unraveling the mysteries of bonding and materials. In our next session, we'll venture into the practical applications of this theory, discovering how it helps us understand and manipulate the world around us. Until then, keep up the curiosity and enthusiasm. See you next time. Great job, everyone. Hello again, students. Now that we've delved into energy production, Let's shift our focus to another captivating topic. Molecular orbitals. Have you ever wondered how atoms come together to form molecules with unique properties? Well, it all begins with atomic orbitals. When these orbitals combine, they give rise to molecular orbitals. Here's an interesting rule. The number of molecular orbitals formed is equal to the number of atomic orbitals that joined forces. 
Imagine atoms as puzzle pieces, fitting together to create entirely new structures. This concept helps us understand the complex nature of molecular interactions. Now, let's journey further into the realm of electrons and their impact on bonding. Hello again, st Good day, students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating realm of electronic structures within crystalline solids and molecules. In this journey, we'll uncover both the commonalities and distinctions that exist. Let's begin by considering an intriguing example that showcases these concepts vividly. Good day, student. To truly grasp the concepts at hand, let's focus on the molecular orbital diagram of a chain of lithium atoms. As we increase the length of the chain, we witness intriguing transformations. Each lithium atom contributes a half-filled 2's orbital in its valence shell, setting the stage for remarkable interactions. To truly grasp the Now, let's shift our attention to Li2. It's quite fascinating to observe that its molecular orbital diagram shares certain similarities with that of an H2 molecule. If we closely examine the electronic structure, we notice the presence of a filled bonding molecular orbital as well as an empty anti-bonding molecular orbital. What's particularly intriguing is the nodal plane that divides these orbitals, right between the two atoms. This nodal plane serves to emphasize the dynamic interactions that are taking place within the molecule. So, in essence, as we delve deeper into the molecular world of Li2, we uncover captivating details about its electronic arrangement and bonding characteristics. Now, let's shift. Now, let's delve into the intriguing realm of Li4. Brace yourselves for the complexity. We're met with, not two, but four molecular orbitals. These orbitals span a spectrum of energy levels, from the lowest, which exhibits entirely bonding interactions with zero nodal planes, to the highest, where every interaction is anti-bonding, featuring three nodal planes. Now, let Before we conclude, let's recap what we've uncovered. We've journeyed through electronic structures in both crystalline solids and molecules. Our focus on the molecular orbital diagram of lithium chains revealed the intricate dance between bonding and anti-bonding interactions. Remember, as we explore the world of chemistry, these principles lay the foundation for understanding the behavior of matter at the atomic and molecular levels. Before we con as we wrap up today's lesson, I encourage you to consider the bigger picture. The insights we've gained into electronic structures have far-reaching implications. These concepts find applications in fields ranging from materials science to electronics, impacting everything from the design of new materials to the advancement of technology. With a solid grasp of these foundations, you're equipped to explore the remarkable world of chemistry further. Keep your curiosity burning, and until next time, keep seeking knowledge. As we wrap up, good day, students. Today's topic delves into the fascinating realm of electronic band structure and crystals. To embark on this journey, we need to understand the concept of molecular orbitals. Imagine a chain of molecules. When the chain stretches extensively, the molecular orbitals become so numerous that the energy gaps between them become remarkably small. As we envision the chain growing infinitely, a remarkable transformation occurs. The allowed energy states seamlessly blend into one another, forming what we call a continuous band of energy levels. Now, when we shift our focus to a crystal that's sizable enough for us to perceive, such as with the naked eye or through an optical microscope, we encounter an intricate electronic landscape. The reason behind this similarity lies in the colossal number of atoms that compose a crystal. This abundance of atoms leads to an electronic structure akin to that of the infinite chain we just discussed. These electronic structures manifest as distinct energy bands, which are beautifully depicted on the right-hand side of figure 12.22. So, keep in mind that as the chain extends indefinitely, the concept of energy bands takes center stage. Now, let's journey further and uncover the complexities of electronic band structures and crystals. Good day, student. Hello again, students. Let's deepen our understanding of energy bands and crystals, and their connection to the electronic structure of an infinite chain. Remember, the fascinating similarity between the two arises from the abundance of atoms within a crystal, 
similar to the countless molecules in our theoretical infinite chain. This abundance leads to the formation of energy bands that grace the electronic landscape of the crystal. These energy bands, as shown in the visual on this topic, emerge as regions of allowed energy states. Think of them as musical scales on a grand cosmic keyboard, where each band represents a different set of energy levels that electrons can inhabit. These bands are incredibly important because they dictate the behavior of electrons in a crystal. Depending on an electron's energy level, it might reside within a specific band or transition between bands. This dynamic interplay of electrons and energy bands is at the heart of a crystal's electronic behavior. As we continue our exploration, keep in mind that these energy bands dictate the properties and behaviors of materials we encounter in our daily lives. Now, let's move forward and delve into the intricacies of these energy bands and their mesmerizing effects. Hello again, students. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're diving deeper into the significance of energy bands within crystals. Our understanding of these energy bands is crucial, as they mold the electronic behavior of crystals in profound ways. Think of energy bands as the blueprint for a crystal's electronic landscape. Each band represents a distinct set of energy levels that electrons can occupy, much like different floors in a towering skyscraper. Now, these energy bands don't just exist in isolation. They interact with electrons, shaping the properties of the material they form. From electrical conductivity to thermal behavior, a crystal's characteristics are deeply tied to the behavior of its electrons within these energy bands. The intriguing part is that each band can bring forth unique properties. Electrons residing in different bands might display different conductivities, reactivity, and responses to external stimuli. So, the next time you witness a material's fascinating properties, remember that it's the dance of electrons within these energy bands that gives rise to such behaviors. As we continue our journey, we'll uncover more about how these energy bands influence the behavior of materials and contribute to the marvels of technology and science around us. Welcome back, dear Greetings, curious minds. We're about to unravel the captivating quantum dance of electrons within energy bands. As we've learned, energy bands play a pivotal role in shaping a crystal's electronic landscape. Within these bands, electrons occupy specific energy levels, much like guests choosing different floors in a grand hotel. However, electrons aren't ordinary guests, their behavior is governed by the intricate laws of quantum mechanics. In this quantum realm, electrons exhibit behaviors that often defy our classical understanding of the world. They can exist in multiple states at once and transition between energy levels through the mysterious phenomenon of quantum tunneling. As we explore the dance of electrons within energy bands, remember that their interactions are governed by the fascinating laws of quantum physics. This quantum nature leads to the creation of materials with properties that revolutionize technology and enhance our understanding of the universe. So, keep in mind that as we peer into the microscopic world of crystals, we're also venturing into the realm of quantum wonders. Join me as we journey further into the heart of electron behavior and the mesmerizing world of energy bands. Greetings, Cure. Hello again, students. Today, we're delving deeper into the world of solid-state physics. You remember how we discussed electronic structures in atoms? Well, when it comes to metals, things get a bit more intricate. The electronic structures of most metals are actually more complex than what we previously explored. Why is that, you ask? Well, it's because we need to take into account not just one type of atomic orbital on each atom, but multiple types. Imagine the intricate dance of electrons happening within these materials. Each type of orbital contributes to its own unique band in the material's electronic structure. This gives rise to a series of bands collectively forming what we call the band structure of a solid. So, when you think about the electronic makeup of a bulk solid, picture it as a symphony of bands, each representing a different set of electronic states. Now, let's continue unraveling the mysteries of band structures and their role in understanding the behavior of solids. Hello again. Greetings, dear students. We're about to uncover the secrets held within a solid's band structure. Imagine the band structure as the architectural blueprint of a solid's electronic arrangement. 
Just as a blueprint guides the construction of a building, the band structure guides the behavior of a solid. It plays a pivotal role in determining various properties of the material. You see, different types of solids exhibit different band structures, which in turn affect how they conduct electricity, reflect light, and even how they respond to temperature changes. This concept helps us understand the distinctions between conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. The band theory provides us with insights into why some materials readily allow electricity to flow, while others staunchly resist it. It also explains how semiconductors can be manipulated to become conductive or insulating under certain conditions. So, the next time you interact with electronic devices or marvel at the properties of materials, remember that it's all influenced by the intricate dance of electrons within their band structures. Greetings, dear Hello, eager learners. Let's take a detour into the world of semiconductors within band structures. Now, what sets semiconductors apart is their intriguing ability to be somewhere in between conductors and insulators. How is this possible, you ask? Well, it's all about manipulating the band structure. Imagine you're an orchestra conductor, and you're adjusting the arrangement to change the mood of the music. Similarly, we can alter the properties of a semiconductor by introducing impurities or dupants. This process is called doping, and it allows us to tweak the band structure to our advantage. When we introduce certain dupants, we create in type semiconductors, which have extra electrons and are good conductors. On the other hand, p type semiconductors have fewer electrons, creating holes that behave like positive charge carriers. The interaction between these n type and p type materials is at the heart of many electronic devices, like diodes and transistors. So, remember, it's not just about the materials themselves but how we play with their band structures that opens the doors to a world of technological possibilities. Hello, eager Great to see you all engaged. As we wrap up our journey through band structures, let's peek into the fascinating realm of molecular orbitals. We've been discussing band structures primarily in the context of solids, but did you know that similar concepts apply to molecules too? Just as atoms contribute to bands in solids, Molecular orbitals give rise to energy bands within molecules. Think of it as an intricate dance of electrons on a smaller scale. The concept is analogous, but there are intriguing differences as well. Molecules offer unique electronic behaviors that can lead to exciting properties, and understanding their band structures provides insights into their reactivity, optical properties, and more. So, whether it's within a solid or a molecule, the dance of electrons within band structures unveils the hidden symphonies of the microcosmic world around us. With this, we conclude our exploration of band structures, but remember, the world of science is boundless, and there's always more to discover. Keep your curiosity alive. Great to see you all in Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of band structures in metals. Get ready to explore the fascinating electron arrangement within these materials. Our journey starts with a glance at figure 12.23, where you can see a schematic representation of a typical metal's band structure. While the electron filling depicted here corresponds to nickel metal, it's important to note that the fundamental characteristics are quite similar across various metals. Now, let's focus on the electron configuration of a nickel atom, which is 3D84S24P0 as you can see on the left side of the figure. Keep in mind that the energy bands we'll talk about arise from these orbitals, and we'll treat the 4s, 4p, and 3d orbitals independently. These orbitals each contribute to a band of molecular orbitals, which in practice aren't entirely isolated from one another. However, for our learning journey, this simplification serves us well. Are you ready to dive into the intricacies of these energy bands? Let's continue to the next topic and uncover more. Hello, dear st Welcome to Topic 2, my eager learners. Today, we're going to tackle an important concept, the independence and interaction of energy bands. Now, while we've treated these bands as somewhat independent, remember that in reality, they interact and overlap. Don't let this complexity overwhelm you. Our aim here is to build a solid foundation of understanding. Think of it this way. Just like in a symphony, different musical instruments play their parts, and while they might be distinct, they come together to create a harmonious masterpiece. Similarly, in metals, 
These energy bands might overlap and interact. But our simplified approach is still quite reasonable for grasping the basics. So, keep your curiosity alive and your questions ready as we proceed to our next topic. Welcome to Fantastic job, students. You're absorbing knowledge like sponges. On topic 3, we're diving into the core of band formation through molecular orbitals. Get ready to uncover the role of the 4s, 4p, and 3d orbitals in this process. These orbitals come together to contribute to various energy bands that you see on the right side of figure 12.23. Think of this as a grand puzzle, where each orbital fits into the larger picture, creating these bands. As we move forward, I want you to visualize this process. Imagine these orbitals like pieces of a puzzle coming together to form a beautiful masterpiece, the energy bands. Remember, this intricate relationship between the electron arrangement and the resulting band structure is the key to understanding the behavior of metals. With that in mind, let's journey onward. Fantastic job! Hello, curious minds. We're almost at the end of our journey through band structures in metals. But before we conclude, let's address the elephant in the room, real-world complexity. While we've been simplifying our approach for educational purposes, you should know that bands in real materials can overlap, creating intricate electronic behaviors. These complexities are what materials scientists explore in their quest to understand and engineer materials for various applications. So, as you wrap up this lesson, remember that our journey today is just the tip of the iceberg. The world of material science holds endless possibilities for discovery, and I encourage you to explore further if this subject has ignited your passion. Now, give yourselves a round of applause for your attentiveness and dedication. You've earned it. Keep those questions coming and keep your thirst for knowledge alive. Until next time. Hello, curious. Good day, students. Today's topic delves into the intriguing world of electronic energy bands and how they relate to the different atomic orbitals. Our journey begins by exploring the characteristics that set apart the 4s, 4p, and 3d bands. These bands not only differ in the energy range they span but also in the number of electrons they can hold. Let's take a closer look. The 4s, 4p, and 3d bands have distinctive electron holding capacities of 2, 6, and 10 electrons per atom, respectively. This electron distribution aligns with the Pauli exclusion principle, which dictates that each orbital can hold a maximum of 2 electrons with opposing spins. Now, let's talk about the energy ranges covered by these bands. The 4s and 4p bands span a broader energy range compared to the 3d band. This disparity is due to the size of the atomic orbitals involved. You see, the 3d orbitals are smaller in size, which means they have a reduced ability to overlap effectively with orbitals on neighboring atoms. As a result, the energy range spanned by the 3d band is narrower. Remember, these energy bands and orbital capacities play a crucial role in understanding how electrons are distributed around atoms, which in turn affects the properties and behavior of materials. Keep these concepts in mind as we journey further into the intricacies of electronic structure and atomic interactions. Good day, students. Hello, dear students. In our exciting journey through the realm of material properties, we've come across an intriguing concept related to metals. Figure 12.23 unveils a window into understanding many attributes of metals. Imagine an energy band as a partially filled container, like a reservoir, harboring electrons. It's this incomplete filling of the energy band that gives metals their distinct characteristics. The electrons residing in orbitals near the upper regions of the occupied levels require only a small energy nudge to leap to higher energy orbitals that are currently vacant. Now, here's where things get really fascinating. When any source of excitement enters the scene, think of it as a trigger whether it's an applied electrical potential or an infusion of thermal energy, these electrons are on the move. They shimmy into those previously empty energy levels, liberating themselves to traverse through the lattice structure. And guess what? This energetic dance gives rise to two essential qualities, electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity. Imagine the lattice of a metal vibrating with the rhythm of moving electrons, transferring both electricity and heat. It's like a synchronized dance that brings about the remarkable properties we associate with metals. So, 
as you study the interaction between energy bands and electron movement, remember that this process not only shapes the material world around us but also forms the foundation of many modern technologies. Now, let's embark on our next chapter of exploration. Hello, dear st Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into a critical aspect of materials that contributes to their unique properties. Our second topic takes us into the realm of energy bands and their significance in understanding the periodic properties of metals. Energy bands, as you might recall, play a vital role in explaining why materials behave the way they do. In this context, the overlap of energy bands is a key concept. Without this overlap, we'd encounter a perplexing situation when it comes to metals. Let's consider the alkali metals, members of group 1, and the alkaline earth metals, belonging to group 2. In the absence of D and P bands, we would expect the S band to be half filled for alkali metals and completely filled for alkaline earth metals. However, this hypothetical scenario clashes with our experimental observations. Imagine metals like magnesium, calcium, and strontium not being efficient electrical and thermal conductors. That's contrary to what we see in real life. It's the interaction of these energy bands that explains why metals exhibit the remarkable properties they do. Now, let's delve even further into this intriguing topic, and see how it all fits together. Welcome back, students. Hello, dear students. Today's topic takes us deep into the realm of transition metals and their fascinating properties. As we delve into this, we'll explore how two models, namely, the electron C model and the molecular orbital model, help us make sense of various aspects of these unique elements. Our journey begins by understanding the conductivity of metals, a trait we've covered before. We've seen that both models have their place in explaining this phenomenon. However, it's the molecular orbital model that truly shines when it comes to comprehending some of the more complex properties of transition metals. Let's focus on an intriguing property, the melting points of transition metals, which we can observe in figure 12.21. According to the molecular orbital model, these melting points hold a crucial clue about bonding strength. The model predicts that as we increase the number of valence electrons, the bonding between atoms becomes stronger, and the bonding orbitals start to fill up. It's like building a foundation of connectivity between atoms. But here's where it gets even more interesting. As we progress through the transition metal series, once we cross the midpoint, the bonds begin to weaken. Why? Because now, electrons start to populate anti-bonding orbitals, which are essentially like spaces that hinder strong connections between atoms. The strength of these bonds plays a pivotal role in determining some impressive material properties. Metals with robust bonds tend to have higher melting and boiling points, greater heats of fusion, increased hardness, and so much more. It's the interplay between bonding and antibonding orbitals that shapes these characteristics we observe. As we explore further, keep in mind that the molecular orbital model helps us unravel the intricate behaviors of transition metals especially when it comes to properties that might seem perplexing at first glance. Let's continue our journey into the captivating world of transition metals and their molecular behavior. Hello. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of the piezoelectric effect and its remarkable applications. Our journey begins with a piezoelectric crystal a unique material that responds to applied pressure by producing a voltage difference across its crystal faces. This phenomenon is quite astonishing because it works in both directions. Applying a voltage to the crystal can even cause it to deform its structure by a slight 0.1%. Now, let's take a closer look at the diverse range of applications that harness this effect. Imagine gas ignition lighters, where the piezoelectric effect plays a crucial role. It's also used in sophisticated sonar technology, providing us with the ability to navigate underwater environments. For precise measurements, balances equipped with this effect are used. Ultrasound nozzles, inkjet printers, and even pickups for musical instruments benefit from this technology. Ever wondered how clock generators synchronize computer circuit boards? Well, the piezoelectric effect is a key player there too. And don't forget the role it plays in probes for scanning microscopes, helping us explore the microscopic world. Now, let's talk about some specific materials that showcase this effect. 
Rochelle salt, also known as potassium sodium tartrate, was one of the pioneers in this field. It was used in gramophone pickups, microphones, and earpieces, boasting an impressive output of up to 2 volts. However, this material had its limitations due to its susceptibility to moisture. In humid climates, it tended to deteriorate quickly. It's fascinating how the interplay of materials and energy can shape our world. So, let's move on and explore more. Welcome back, students. Hello again, dear students. Today, our focus sharpens as we explore the intricate link between the structure of an ionic solid and its empirical formula. Picture this. The way ions are stacked in a crystal lattice directly impacts the ratios of elements in the compound's formula. It's like a puzzle, and we're here to solve it. As we uncover the mysteries of ionic solid structures, you'll see how the arrangement of ions intricately weaves with the compound's formula. So, let's embark on this enlightening journey together. Hello again, dear- Ahoy, young scholars. Today's voyage is all about bringing theory to life. We'll take a deep dive into a real-world example of an ionic compound. Get ready to unravel the arrangement of ions within its crystal lattice. As we journey through the depths of its structure, we'll uncover the hidden connections that tie its arrangement to the empirical formula. You'll witness the magic of how the positioning of ions contributes to those fascinating formula ratios. Remember, every piece of this puzzle is crucial. So keep your curiosity alive as we sail through. Ahoy, young s- Congratulations, dear students, for navigating this intricate sea of knowledge. You've sailed through the crystal structures of ionic solids and deciphered the art of relating them to empirical formulas. Your hard work and dedication have paid off. Now, armed with this understanding, you're equipped to decipher the secrets of compounds arrangements and their formulas. Remember, learning is a journey, and you've taken a significant step forward. As you set sail to explore more scientific horizons, always keep the spirit of curiosity alive. Until next time, keep shining and exploring. Congratulations. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the captivating realm of ionic bonding and its impact on the remarkable characteristics of ionic compounds. Imagine, within ionic solids, the binding force is the remarkable electrostatic attraction between positively charged cations and negatively charged anions. These attractions create what we call ionic bonds. Now, what makes these compounds truly exceptional is their remarkable melting and boiling points which stand as a testament to the sheer strength of these ionic bonds. You see, the strength of an ionic bond is intricately linked to the charges and sizes of the ions involved. Hello, dear st Hello again, young scholars. Now, let's explore how the sizes of ions come into play when determining the strength of ionic bonds. As ions become smaller, their interactions with each other grow stronger. This phenomenon is beautifully evident when we examine the melting points of alkali metal halides. If the ions are smaller, the forces of attraction between them intensify, leading to higher melting points. This relationship mirrors the trends we've discussed previously about lattice enthalpy. Hello again, young- Fantastic to see you, engaged, students. Now, let's bridge our understanding of ionic bonding with the concept of lattice enthalpy. This relationship between the strength of ionic bonds and lattice enthalpy is truly fascinating. Just as we've explored, lattice enthalpy is also influenced by ion ch charges and sizes. These trends align beautifully with what we've learned about melting points and bond strengths. You're really grasping the interconnected nature of these concepts. Fantastic to see. Good day, students. Today. We're delving into the captivating realm of bonding and its impact on the properties of different solids. Our journey begins by examining the distinctions between ionic and metallic bonding and how these differences contribute to their unique characteristics. Now, let's start with ionic compounds. In these compounds, the valence electrons are confined to the anions rather than being freely delocalized. As a result, ionic compounds typically exhibit the property of being electrical insulators. 
Their brittleness, which is an interesting property, can be explained by the repulsive interactions between ions of similar charges. When stress is applied to an ionic solid, the arrangement of atoms can shift, leading to a separation of the planes of cations and anions. This repulsive interaction causes the planes to split away from each other, which is a property that's actually used in the crafting of specific gemstones like ruby, which is mainly composed of aluminium oxide. Now that we've explored the intricacies of ionic compounds, let's move on to our next segment and delve into the fascinating world of metallic bonding. Good day. Welcome back, students. Today's journey takes us deeper into the world of bonding, and this time, we're exploring the captivating realm of metallic bonding. Metallic compounds possess distinct properties owing to their unique bonding nature. Unlike ionic compounds, in metallic compounds, electrons are delocalized and form what we call an electron C. This means that electrons can freely move among the metal cations within the structure. This electron C model is the foundation for the exceptional properties of metals. They are excellent conductors of both electricity and heat due to the mobility of these electrons. In addition, metals are malleable and ductile, meaning they can be easily shaped and stretched without breaking. This property stems from the non-directional nature of metallic bonding, which allows the atoms to shift positions without disrupting the overall structure. So, remember, in metallic bonding, it's all about the sea of electrons creating these remarkable properties. As we continue our exploration, keep these concepts in mind as they will help us better understand the differences between ionic and metallic solids. Welcome back, stu- Hello again, students. Now that we've delved into the specifics of both ionic and metallic bonding, let's put everything into perspective by comparing their properties. Both ionic and metallic solids share a common characteristic. They both boast high melting and boiling points. However, the similarities end there. The major difference arises in their electrical conductivity. Ionic solids, as we've discussed earlier, are typically electrical insulators due to the confinement of valence electrons to anions. On the other hand, metallic solids are exceptional conductors of both electricity and heat thanks to the mobility of electrons within the electron C. Another point of contrast lies in their mechanical properties. Ionic solids tend to be brittle, a result of the repulsive forces between ions of similar charge causing planes to split apart under stress. In contrast, metallic solids are malleable and ductile due to their non-directional bonding and the freedom of electrons to accommodate shifts in the atomic arrangement. These differences in properties stem directly from the distinctive bonding mechanisms in these two types of solids. Keep these insights in mind as we continue to explore the captivating world of chemistry and material science. Hello again, stu- Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of ionic structures and specifically, the cesium chloride structure. So, what exactly are ionic structures? Well, their arrangements of ions in a crystalline lattice. Now, the cesium chloride structure is quite interesting. Picture a primitive cubic lattice, where anions are positioned on the corners of the unit cell, and right at the center, we have a cation. It's important to note that there isn't a lattice point within the primitive unit cell itself. This arrangement results in each cation and anion being surrounded by a cube of eight ions of the opposite type. This concept introduces us to the idea of coordination number, which indicates how many ions are in direct contact with a central ion. All right, let's move on to more exciting discoveries. Welcome back. Hello again, curious minds. Let's dive deeper into coordination numbers and how they relate to the bonding in ionic structures. Coordination number. Simply put, tells us how many neighboring ions surround a central ion. In the cesium chloride structure, as we mentioned earlier, each cation and anion is encircled by eight ions of the opposite kind. Now, this ties into the concept of ionic bonding. Ionic bonds are formed due to the electrostatic attraction between positively charged cations and negatively charged anions. This strong attraction holds the structure together. In the case of the cesium chloride structure, this bond forms due to the arrangement we discussed, where each ion is surrounded by eight ions of opposite charge. This arrangement provides stability to the crystal lattice, 
As we continue, you'll notice how these ideas interconnect and contribute to our understanding of the world around us. Hello again. Greetings, young scholars. Let's explore the wide-reaching impact of ionic structures in the field of chemistry. Understanding these structures is pivotal because they play a crucial role in the behavior of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are incredibly versatile and find applications in various aspects of our lives. For instance, let's circle back to the cesium chloride structure. The arrangement we discussed has applications beyond theoretical understanding. In the real world, compounds with this structure can be used in industries ranging from materials science to electronics. Think about the salt you use in your kitchen. It's an ionic compound. These compounds have specific properties that make them useful in different contexts. Our exploration today takes us beyond the classroom and into the realm of practical applications. Greetings, young. As we dive deeper, let's explore the specific atom displacements that make sodium chloride and ZNS structures distinct. In the sodium chloride structure, the Na plus ions are slightly displaced from the Cl ions, positioned along the edges of the unit cell. On the other hand, in the ZNS structure, the Zn2 plus ions are displaced from the S2 ions along the body diagonal of the unit cell. These subtle variations in arrangement give rise to unique properties and coordination environments. As we dive now, Let's dive into the concept of coordination numbers and environments. In sodium chloride, each cation, Na+, and anion, Cl, are surrounded by six ions of the opposite type. This leads to an octahedral coordination environment. On the other hand, in zince, each cation, Zn2+, and anion, S2, are surrounded by four ions of the opposite type, resulting in a tetrahedral coordination geometry, these distinctive arrangements influence the properties and behavior of these materials. Now, let's to solidify our understanding, let's take a visual journey into the cation coordination environments. Figure 12.26 provides us with a clear depiction of these arrangements. In sodium chloride, the octahedral arrangement surrounds Na plus ions, while in ZNS, the tetrahedral arrangement envelops Zn2 plus ions. This visual representation helps us grasp the intricacies of coordination in crystal structures. To solidify our under- As we wrap up today's lesson, let's summarize our key takeaways. Both sodium chloride and ZNS structures have their foundations on the face-centered cubic lattice, with anions occupying corners and faces of the unit cell. The variations in atom displacements result in different coordination numbers and environments. Sodium chloride presents an octahedral coordination environment, while ZNS boasts a tetrahedral arrangement. This diversity in crystal structures enriches our understanding of the fascinating world of material science. As we wrap up, hello, students. Today, we're going to delve into the fascinating world of ionic compound structures and what factors influence the formation of the most favorable structures. As we explore this topic, we'll come to understand the role that ion sizes and stoichiometry play in determining the arrangement of ions within a crystal lattice. So, let's get started. Hello, student. Let's continue our journey, shall we? When the cation and anion are quite similar in size, a larger coordination number becomes favored. A prime example of this is the cesium chloride structure. In this arrangement, the cations and anions are so compatible in size that they can actually touch each other. This close proximity allows for a coordination number of 8, which characterizes the cesium chloride structure. Let's continue our journey. Fasten your seatbelts, because we're about to uncover more intricacies. As the cation size begins to decrease, a point arrives where maintaining both cation-anion contacts and preventing anion-anion contact becomes challenging. In this scenario, the coordination number decreases. Let's take the example of moving from the sodium chloride to the ZNS structure. While the cation-anion contacts are still maintained, the anions are now unable to escape touching each other. This drop in coordination number, from 8 to 6, reflects the transition to the sodium chloride structure. 
Fasten your seat belt. Get ready for a captivating twist, dear students. As the cation size continues to shrink, there comes a point where maintaining even a coordination number of six becomes untenable. This leads us to the fascinating zinc blend structure. Here, the coordination number drops once again, this time from six to four. The close packing of ions becomes a delicate balancing act, and the resulting structure, the zinc blend, becomes the more favored arrangement. Get ready for a cap. As we conclude our exploration, let's recap the key takeaways, shall we? The structures of ionic compounds are influenced by the sizes of ions and the stoichiometry of the compound. Specifically, the coordination numbers change as cation and anion sizes vary. When cation and anion sizes are similar, higher coordination numbers can be realized, such as in the cesium chloride structure. However, as the cation size decreases, the coordination number drops, transitioning from structures like sodium chloride to ZNS. And when the cation size decreases further, the coordination number is once again reduced, leading to structures like the zinc blend. Remember, it's a delicate dance of ion sizes and contacts that shapes these intriguing crystal structures. As we conclude... Hello again, students. Let's now delve into the fascinating realm of ionic compound structures and their stability. Did you know that the balance between cations and anions plays a crucial role in determining the most stable structure type? Take a look at figure 12.26. You'll notice that all the structures depicted there have something in common. They possess an equal number of cations and anions. These specific structure types, such as cesium chloride, sodium chloride, and zinc blend, are observed only when the number of cations and anions is perfectly balanced. However, in cases where this balance isn't maintained, we encounter a different scenario. Other crystal structures emerge to accommodate the varying cation-anion ratios. Now, let's explore further to grasp the intricate world of crystal structures and their relationship to cation-anion ratios. Hello again. Greetings, young minds. Today's lesson takes us deeper into the realm of ionic compound stability and its profound impact on crystal structures. It's fascinating how the relative number of cations and anions in a compound can significantly influence its stability and structure. Our focus narrows in on the magic that happens when cations and anions are in perfect harmony, as seen in cesium chloride, sodium chloride, and zinc blend structures. These arrangements can only occur when the cation-anion ratio is balanced. But when this balance wavers, a world of diverse crystal structures unfurls before us. Brace yourselves for a journey through the intricacies of these various crystal formations, each adapting to the unique demands of cation-anion proportions. Greetings, young Greetings once again, inquisitive scholars. Our exploration continues into the realm of crystal structures and their incredible adaptability. Brace yourselves, for crystal structures are remarkably flexible. They adjust in response to shifting cation-anion ratios, creating a diverse array of lattice arrangements. The secret behind these structural changes lies in the connection between a compound structure and its properties. As we venture further, you'll marvel at the captivating interplay between chemical composition, structure, and the mesmerizing properties that emerge. Get ready to uncover the magic of crystal adaptations and their integral role in the world of material science. Greetings once again. Hello, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of crystal structures in ionic compounds. We'll be focusing on the examples of Na, Mg, and Sc. Now, let's take a closer look at these compounds and their unique properties. Hello, student. All right. Let's start with sodium fluoride, NaF. This compound showcases a crystal structure that's quite similar to the structure of sodium chloride, sodium chloride, which is common table salt. In both NaF and sodium chloride, the coordination number is 6 for both cations and anions. This similarity is expected because of the resemblance between NaF and sodium chloride. All right. Let's Moving on to magnesium fluoride, which is denoted as MGFU. Here, things get a bit more interesting. MGFU. 
adopts a crystal structure known as the rutile structure. Unlike the 1 to 1 ratio of sodium fluoride, MgFU has two fluoride anions for every magnesium cation. This results in a tetragonal crystal structure. The coordination number for cations remains 6, but the coordination number for fluoride anions decreases to 3. This change in anion coordination number is a consequence of the different ratio between cations and anions. Moving on to Null. Null. Hello again, dear students. Now, let's delve into the intriguing concept of molecular shape and how it influences the way molecules fit together in three dimensions. Picture this. Molecules are like tiny puzzle pieces, and their shapes determine how well they fit together. Take the example of benzene, a fascinating molecule composed of six carbon and six hydrogen atoms. Its symmetrical, planar structure makes it incredibly efficient in packing. This efficiency translates to a higher melting point compared to toluene. Toluene, on the other hand, has a slightly different structure due to the replacement of one hydrogen atom with a CH3 group. This change in symmetry affects its packing in a crystal lattice, leading to a lower melting point. So, remember, the shape of molecules plays a pivotal role in their arrangement and properties. Hello again, dear. Hello, inquisitive minds. On topic 4, we're about to explore an exciting concept, hydrogen bonding and its impact on melting and boiling points. Phenol is our star today, featuring an O group attached to its benzene ring. This O group is a hydrogen bonding powerhouse. Hydrogen bonds form between the O groups of phenol molecules and neighboring molecules. These bonds create strong intermolecular attractions, leading to higher melting and boiling points compared to plain benzene. So, remember, the presence of hydrogen bonds can significantly alter a substance's properties. Hello, inquis- Great job, my brilliant scholars. Let's take a moment to wrap up with topic 5 and summarize our remarkable journey. We've explored how molecular shape influences packing efficiency and, consequently, melting and boiling points. Symmetrical planar structures like benzene lead to higher melting points due to efficient packing. Intermolecular forces, which depend on how well molecules are packed, affect both melting and boiling points. And then we met phenol, where the O group forms powerful hydrogen bonds, leading to higher melting and boiling points compared to benzene. Remember, Every molecule's structure holds a tale of its properties waiting to be unraveled. Keep up the curiosity, and until next time, happy learning. Great job, my b Good day, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of covalent network solids. These are unique types of solids where atoms are intricately interconnected through robust covalent bonds. These bonds are exceptionally strong much stronger than the forces between molecules in other types of solids. This characteristic leads to some remarkable properties. These solids boast incredible hardness and boast high melting points, setting them apart from other types of solids, like molecular ones. Let's start our exploration with a familiar element, carbon. Carbon showcases two prominent examples of covalent network solids, diamond and graphite. While they might appear similar, they exhibit vastly different properties due to their distinct atomic arrangements. Are you ready to uncover more about these fascinating solids? Let's continue. Good day, student. Welcome back, students. Today, we're diving deeper into the captivating structure of diamond. This covalent network solid is composed of a three-dimensional network of carbon atoms. What's unique is that each carbon atom forms incredibly strong covalent bonds with not one, not two, but four neighboring carbon atoms. This forms a sturdy and rigid structure, granting diamond its exceptional hardness. This hardness is why diamond is used in various industrial applications, from cutting tools to jewelry. Additionally, the way light interacts with the carbon atom's arrangement contributes to diamond's stunning sparkle. The high refractive index plays a role in dispersing light into its characteristic rainbow hues. Isn't the science behind it fascinating? Welcome back, stu- Hello again, curious minds. Let's now shift our focus to graphite, another captivating covalent network solid. Graphite's structure is quite distinct from that of diamond. Here, 
carbon atoms form layers arranged in a hexagonal pattern. While covalent bonds within each layer are strong, the forces between the layers are relatively weak. This characteristic gives graphite an intriguing property. The layers can easily topic over one another. This sliding ability makes graphite an excellent lubricant. But that's not all. The arrangement of electrons in these layers results in something truly remarkable. Graphite possesses electrical conductivity due to the availability of delocalized electrons, allowing them to move freely and carry electrical current. This property makes graphite an essential component in various electronic devices. Ready for more insights? Let's continue exploring. Hello again. Hello, class. Today, we're going to delve into the intriguing world of graphite structure and bonding. Graphite is an extraordinary substance with a unique arrangement of carbon atoms. Imagine layers of carbon atoms that are covalently bonded, and these layers are held together by intermolecular forces. Think of these layers like a stack of interconnected hexagons. This structure is similar to what we find in graphene, which is a single layer of graphite. The hexagonal unit cell of graphite contains two layers, and the carbon atoms in one layer sit over the middle of the hexagons in the layer below, creating an offset arrangement. It's fascinating to note that each carbon atom in a layer is covalently bonded to three other carbons, forming those interconnected hexagonal rings. The distance between adjacent carbon atoms within a layer is about 142 picometers, pm which is very close to the cc distance in benzene, measuring at 140 pm. Interestingly, the bonding in graphite resembles that of benzene, with delocalized pi bonds extending over the layers. This type of bonding allows for some remarkable properties of graphite that we'll explore further. Now, let's dive into the specifics of how this unique structure leads to graphite's fascinating properties. Hello, class. Welcome back, everyone. In our last discussion, we discovered the layered structure of graphite. Now, let's explore the forces that hold these layers together. Within each layer, carbon atoms are covalently bonded to each other, forming those interconnected hexagonal rings we talked about earlier. However, the layers themselves are not covalently bonded. They are held together by intermolecular forces. These forces are known as van der Waals forces, which are relatively weak compared to covalent bonds. Imagine van der Waals forces as gentle attractions between molecules or atoms due to temporary fluctuations in electron distribution. In the case of graphite, these forces come into play between the layers, allowing them to stick together. It's these intermolecular forces that give graphite some of its interesting properties, such as its slippery nature and its ability to act as a lubricant. So, remember, while the covalent bonds within the layers are strong, the forces between the layers are much weaker but still significant in creating the overall structure of graphite. Now, let's move on to explore more captivating aspects of graphite's properties. Welcome back, everyone. Great to have you all back. Today, we're diving into a crucial aspect of graphite's unique properties, its delocalized pi bonds. Remember, we mentioned that graphite's bonding is reminiscent of benzene, with delocalized pi bonds extending over the layers. What does this mean? Well, it means that some electrons in the outermost energy level of carbon atoms aren't tightly bound to any one atom. Instead, they move freely across the layers, creating what we call delocalized pi bonds. This phenomenon gives rise to some remarkable characteristics of graphite. First, it grants graphite its excellent conductivity. Imagine those free-moving electrons acting as carriers of electric charge, allowing graphite to conduct electricity. This property makes graphite a crucial component in various electrical applications. Another interesting property is graphite's slippery and lubricating nature. The weak intermolecular forces between layers allow the layers to topic over each other easily. This is why graphite is often used as a lubricant, like in pencils where it leaves behind a smooth mark. So, as you can see, the arrangement of carbon atoms in graphite isn't just interesting on a structural level, it leads to some intriguing practical applications as well. Next, we'll explore even more facets of graphite significance. Great to have you all back. As we journey forward, it's essential to distinguish between two key types of solids. Crystalline and amorphous. Crystalline solids exhibit an orderly, repeating pattern at the atomic level 
which leads to distinct melting points. On the other hand, amorphous solids lack a well-defined structure, resulting in a gradual softening over a temperature range, rather than a specific melting point. Keep this in mind as we explore the world of solid structures. As we journey forward. Hello again, students. Today, we're going to uncover the various applications and uses of graphite that make it an indispensable material. You might be surprised to learn that the lead in pencils is actually a core made of graphite. This graphite core leaves behind marks when it interacts with paper due to the layers sliding off and leaving a trail of material. Graphite is also employed in composite materials to reinforce them, providing strength and durability. Its heat and chemical resistance make it an excellent choice in high temperature environments and corrosive settings. Another remarkable application is its use as a moderator in nuclear reactors. Neutrons released in nuclear reactions can be moving too quickly to effectively sustain a chain reaction. Graphite's ability to slow down these neutrons makes it an ideal material for maintaining controlled nuclear reactions. As we've seen, graphite's unique properties are harnessed in a wide range of fields, from everyday writing tools to advanced nuclear technology. So, next time you pick up a pencil or hear about nuclear reactors, remember the incredible versatility of graphite. Now, let's conclude our journey through graphite's world with a recap of its key points. Hello again, Hello again, students. Let's delve into the remarkable world of carbon allotropes. One intriguing example is graphite, which finds its applications as a lubricant and the lead in pencils. Now, what's truly astonishing is that even though both graphite and diamond are composed of pure carbon, their physical properties are vastly different. How does this happen? The answer lies in their three-dimensional structures and the way carbon atoms bond to each other. Graphite, with its unique arrangement of layers, showcases properties distinct from those of diamond. Let's take a closer look. Hello again. Great job keeping up, students. On topic number four, we're uncovering the incredible disparities between graphite and diamond. Despite both being composed of carbon atoms, diamond's exceptional hardness can be attributed to its tetrahedral structure and the strong covalent bonds that hold its atoms in place. These bonds create a rigid three-dimensional network that gives diamond its renowned durability. However, unlike graphite, diamond doesn't conduct electricity. This is due to its localized valence electrons, which are firmly held in place by the strong covalent bonds. Keep these differences in mind as we move forward. Great job keeping up. Fantastic progress, everyone. Our fifth topic brings us face to face with the captivating structural disparities between graphite and diamond. Graphite showcases its layered structure, where hexagonal carbon atoms arrange themselves in an organized fashion. Diamond, on the other hand, boasts a tetrahedral arrangement, where each carbon atom is bonded to four others in a three-dimensional lattice. Remember, these structural variations are at the core of the diverse properties these materials exhibit. As we wrap up this section, consider how these properties find applications in the real world. Fantastic prog- Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of semiconductors and their unique properties. We already know that metals are excellent conductors of electricity, but what about other materials? Enter semiconductors. These materials exhibit a different level of conductivity, falling between metals and insulators. Let's explore further. Hello. Welcome back, students. Today, our focus is on semiconductors, materials that stand between metals and insulators in terms of their electrical conductivity. What makes semiconductors special? Well, their moderate conductivity paves the way for their extensive use in various electronics and technologies. From computers to solar cells, semiconductors play a vital role in shaping our modern world. Welcome back, students. Fantastic progress, students. Now, let's uncover the captivating world of covalent bonding within semiconductors. Just like diamonds, materials like silicon, germanium, and gray tin consist of an extensive network of covalent bonds. This arrangement sets the stage for their unique properties. The pattern of covalent bonds heavily influences their conductivity and behavior in electronic devices. Fantastic pro-
Bravo, students. As we wrap up our journey through the realm of semiconductors, let's reflect on their immense impact. Semiconductors are the building blocks of modern electronics. Transistors, diodes, and integrated circuits, all harnessed from the unique properties of semiconductors, have revolutionized communication, computing, and so much more. And remember, the world of semiconductor technology is ever-evolving, promising even more exciting discoveries in the future. Bravo, students. Brilliant job, students. Our journey through semiconductors has unveiled their distinct conductivity, their role as technology enablers, and their profound impact on our world. As we conclude, remember that science is an endless adventure. The world of semiconductors is just a glimpse into the fascinating realm of discovery and innovation. Keep exploring, questioning, and pushing the boundaries of knowledge. Until next time. Brilliant job. No. 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 Welcome back, eager minds. Today, let's focus on the incredible contributions of chemists to the development of materials that power our world. Picture this. Chemists are like wizards, conjuring up new substances that didn't even exist before. They're the masterminds behind inventing novel materials that hold unique qualities. But that's not all. Chemists are also the architects of change. They have the power to process natural materials in ways that transform them into substances with specific properties. Imagine turning a mundane material into something with exceptional electrical, magnetic, optical, catalytic, or mechanical traits. These chemically engineered materials form the backbone of our technology-driven society. Now, let's dive into the nitty-gritty of solid materials and explore their structures and mesmerizing properties. Welcome back. Welcome back, eager minds. Today, let's focus on the incredible contributions of chemists to the development of materials that power our world. Picture this. Chemists are like wizards, conjuring up new substances that didn't even exist before. They're the masterminds behind inventing novel materials that hold unique qualities. But that's not all. Chemists are also the architects of change. They have the power to process natural materials in ways that transform them into substances with specific properties. Imagine turning a mundane material into something with exceptional electrical, magnetic, optical, catalytic, or mechanical traits. These chemically engineered materials form the backbone of our technology-driven society. Now, let's dive into the nitty-gritty of solid materials and explore their structures and mesmerizing properties. Welcome back. Welcome back, eager minds. Today, let's focus on the incredible contributions of chemists to the development of materials that power our world. Picture this. Chemists are like wizards, conjuring up new substances that didn't even exist before. They're the masterminds behind inventing novel materials that hold unique qualities. But that's not all. Chemists are also the architects of change. They have the power to process natural materials in ways that transform them into substances with specific properties. Imagine turning a mundane material into something with exceptional electrical, magnetic, optical, catalytic, or mechanical traits. These chemically engineered materials form the backbone of our technology-driven society. Now, let's dive into the nitty-gritty of solid materials and explore their structures and mesmerizing properties. Welcome back. Good day, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing realm of semiconductors, substances that play a crucial role in modern electronics. Semiconductors can be classified into two main categories, elemental semiconductors and compound semiconductors. Elemental semiconductors consist of only one type of atom, while compound semiconductors are composed of two or more elements. Let's dive deeper and explore the characteristics that distinguish these classes. Good day, student. As we journey deeper into the world of semiconductors, it's important to understand energy levels. We have the valence band, where electrons are present, and the conduction band, where electrons can move freely. The energy difference between these bands is crucial, and it's influenced by the extent of orbital overlap between atoms. This energy difference is known as the band gap. Let's see how these concepts relate. As we journey 
As we explore further, we find that the band gap varies within group 14 elemental semiconductors. The band gap tends to decrease as we move down the periodic table. For instance, diamond with a band gap of 15.5 electron volts is an insulator. On the other hand, silicon has a band gap of 11.11 electron volts. Germanium has a band gap of 10.67 electron volts, and gray tin has a band gap of 10.08 electron volts. This trend is quite intriguing, isn't it? As we explore our journey through elemental semiconductors takes us to lead, the heaviest element in group 14. Here's where things get even more interesting. In lead, the band gap collapses altogether. This unique characteristic results in lead having the structure and properties of a metal, unlike other elements in this group. It's fascinating how the arrangement of atoms can lead to such diverse properties. Our journey through element as we conclude our exploration of elemental semiconductors. Let's recap the key points. We've learned about the classification of semiconductors into elemental and compound categories. Group 14 elemental semiconductors show intriguing band gap variation, influenced by orbital overlap. This trend is evident from diamond to gray tin, with lead standing out due to its metallic properties resulting from a collapsed band gap. Remember, these concepts form the foundation of semiconductor physics, a field that has revolutionized modern technology. As we conclude, hello again, students. Now, let's delve into the intriguing world of compound semiconductors and their valence electron count. Just like elemental semiconductors, compound semiconductors also maintain an average of four valence electrons per atom. To illustrate this, let's take the example of gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide. In gauze, each gallium, gallium, atom contributes three valence electrons, and each arsenic, arsenic, atom contributes five valence electrons. When we average these contributions, we still end up with four valence electrons per atom, which is the same as in elemental semiconductors like silicon or germanium. This unique balance of valence electrons contributes to the semiconductor properties of compounds like gauze. Let's move on to the next topic to explore more examples. Hello again, st Welcome, curious minds. In our journey through compound semiconductors, we encounter fascinating examples that showcase the diversity of this field. Let's start with another compound semiconductor, indium phosphide, abbreviated as NP. In NP, each indium atom brings three valence electrons to the table. As we've learned, this contributes to the four valence electrons per atom average, which is a hallmark of semiconductor behavior. And remember, these compound semiconductors have distinct properties even though they maintain this consistent electron count. Now, as we continue, I'd like to briefly mention that there are numerous other compound semiconductors beyond gas and NP. These materials possess their own unique characteristics and applications. Let's explore these concepts further as we progress. Welcome, curious. Greetings, inquisitive minds. Let's wrap up our discussion on compound semiconductors with a deeper look into their pivotal role in shaping the technological landscape. These remarkable materials don't just adhere to the average valence electron count. They leverage their distinct properties to drive advancements in multiple fields. Whether it's the powerful processing of data in electronics, the captivating glow of LEDs, the efficient generation of solar energy, or the high-speed performance of transistors, compound semiconductors are there, making it all possible. Remember, the world of science and technology is full of such interconnected marvels, and by understanding these concepts, you're becoming part of the driving force behind progress. Keep your curiosity alive and your minds open as we journey forth in our studies. Greetings. In Hello, dear students. Today's lesson continues our journey through the world of fascinating chemistry and materials. We're now stepping into the realm of semiconductors and their intriguing crystal structures. Semiconductors are materials that have unique electrical properties, making them essential in modern electronics. Let's focus on a few specific semiconductors, gauze, INP, and cadmium telluride. These materials each have a characteristic valence electron contribution. 
In gauze, gallium and arsenic each provide 3 and 5 valence electrons, respectively, resulting in an average of 4 valence electrons per atom. Similarly, INP involves 3 valence electrons from indium and 5 from phosphorus, giving us that same average of 4 valence electrons per atom. Cadmium telluride is another semiconductor we'll explore, where cadmium offers 2 valence electrons and tellurium contributes 6. Again, we find an average of 4 valence electrons per atom. These semiconductors also share a common crystal structure known as zinc blend. This arrangement plays a vital role in their electronic behavior. Now, let's move on and delve deeper into the exciting world of semiconductor properties and applications. Hello, dear Welcome back, students. Our exploration into the world of semiconductor materials and crystal structures continues. Let's now focus our attention on the fascinating zinc blend crystal structure. This structure is a distinctive arrangement of atoms within a cubic lattice. In this arrangement, each atom is surrounded by four neighboring atoms, forming what we call a tetrahedral coordination. This structure holds great significance because it profoundly impacts the properties of semiconductors like gauze, INP, and cadmium telluride, which we discussed earlier. The arrangement influences how electrons move within the material and contributes to its unique electronic behavior. As we delve further into our studies, you'll discover how these properties make these semiconductors invaluable in various applications, ranging from electronics to optoelectronics and beyond. Welcome back, students. Fantastic to see you all engaged, my bright students. Today, let's broaden our horizons as we explore the diverse applications of semiconductor materials and their role in shaping the technological landscape. Semiconductors are incredibly versatile materials with applications that span across various fields. They are the backbone of modern electronics, powering devices like smartphones, computers, and more. In the realm of photovoltaics, semiconductors play a crucial role in converting sunlight into electricity, making solar panels possible. And that's not all. The fascinating world of optoelectronics merges light and electronics, enabling innovations such as LEDs and lasers. One critical aspect that defines semiconductor behavior is the band gap, which influences how electrons move between energy levels. This property determines whether a semiconductor acts as a conductor, insulator, or something in between. As technology continues to evolve, we're witnessing the emergence of exciting new applications, from quantum computing to wearable electronics. So, my eager learners, keep your curiosity alive, as you are the future pioneers of these groundbreaking advancements. Fantastic to see Greetings, intrepid explorers of knowledge. Today, we embark on a journey into the extraordinary realm of the quantum world, and its connection to semiconductor materials. The quantum realm presents us with a set of mind-bending properties that challenge our conventional understanding of reality. In the context of semiconductors, quantum effects become prominent at the nanoscale. We encounter mesmerizing entities known as quantum dots, tiny semiconductor particles with unique properties due to their size. These dots exhibit quantum confinement, causing electrons to behave differently than they would in larger materials. This phenomenon leads to remarkable optical and electronic properties that can be harnessed for applications in displays, sensors, and even quantum computing. As we conclude our exploration today, remember that the intersection of semiconductors and the quantum world holds the key to shaping the future of technology in unimaginable ways. Stay curious, my brilliant learners, and continue to push the boundaries of human knowledge. Greetings, in Hello, students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating realm of semiconductor band gaps and their crucial role in various electronic and optical devices. As electrical engineers, understanding how to manipulate both orbital overlap and bond polarity allows us to finely tune the band gaps of compound semiconductors. These tailored band gaps find their application in a wide array of electrical and optical devices that surround us in our modern world. So, let's dive right in and uncover the intricacies of this captivating subject. Hello, students. Welcome back, students. Today, we're going to take a closer look at how we manipulate semiconductor band gaps to our advantage. 
By skillfully adjusting the orbital overlap and bond polarity, we can control the energy levels within these materials. This control isn't just a random process. It's about achieving specific properties that are needed for various applications. Think of it like crafting a masterpiece. We need to fine-tune these band gaps to match the requirements of the devices we're working on. This level of precision in band gap engineering is of utmost importance in our field. Welcome back. Hello again, students. Now that we've grasped the concept of band gap manipulation, let's explore where these compound semiconductors find their true calling, in various electronic and optical devices. The beauty of compound semiconductors lies in their versatility. They serve as the building blocks for devices like light-emitting diodes, LEDs, solar cells, and lasers. These devices are the backbone of modern technology, from illuminating our displays to harnessing solar energy. So, remember, the work we're doing here directly contributes to these groundbreaking innovations. Hello again, st Welcome to our next topic, dear students. Today, we're going to explore the differences between elemental and compound semiconductors, in terms of their band gaps. Our trusty table 12.4 will be our guide. This table gives us insights into the band gap values of various materials. By studying these values, we can better understand how different materials behave and how their properties can be harnessed for specific purposes. So, let's dive into the world of elemental and compound semiconductors. Welcome to our Hello again, bright minds. As we approach the end of our discussion, it's crucial to recognize the pivotal role that band gaps play in the functionality of semiconductor devices. The band gap directly affects energy levels and transitions within these materials. Some materials have what we call direct band gaps, where electrons can easily transition between energy levels. Others have indirect band gaps, which require a bit more effort for electron transitions. Understanding these concepts helps us design devices that operate efficiently and produce desired outcomes. And with that, we conclude our exploration of semiconductor band gaps today. Hello again. Hello again, students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating realm of semiconductors and the critical role played by dew pants in their conductivity. As we know, even a trace amount of a dopant can cause a remarkable change in conductivity. But this brings up an essential point the need for utmost care in controlling impurities within semiconductors. The semiconductor industry goes to great lengths, using what's known as 99 silicon. What's that? Well, it means that silicon, the heart of integrated circuits, must be an astonishing 99.9999999999% pure. Yes, you heard it right, 99s after the decimal point. This stringent purity requirement ensures that semiconductors can function effectively. How is this achieved? Through precise impurity control, which brings us to our next topic. Hello again, stu Hello again, students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating realm of semiconductors and the critical role played by dew pants in their conductivity. As we know, even a trace amount of a dopant can cause a remarkable change in conductivity. But this brings up an essential point the need for utmost care in controlling impurities within semiconductors. The semiconductor industry goes to great lengths, using what's known as 99 silicon. What's that? Well, it means that silicon, the heart of integrated circuits, must be an astonishing 99.9999999999% pure. Yes, you heard it right, 99s after the decimal point. This stringent purity requirement ensures that semiconductors can function effectively. How is this achieved? Through precise impurity control, which brings us to our next topic. Hello again, st Great job staying with us, students. Let's now focus on the concept of doping and how it grants us control over electrical conductivity. Doping is like adding just the right spices to a recipe to enhance its flavor. In the world of semiconductors, do pants are those spices that can be precisely controlled to adjust the material's properties. By carefully selecting the type and concentration of do pants, we can modify the semiconductor's behavior according to our needs. 
It's like having a magic wand that allows us to fine-tune the material's conductivity and other properties. This ability is crucial for creating the electronic devices that power our modern world. Great job staying. Welcome, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of alloys and the various ways they can be categorized. Alloys are unique mixtures that possess exceptional properties. We'll start by exploring the four primary categories of alloys. Substitutional alloys, interstitial alloys, heterogeneous alloys, and intermetallic compounds. Our focus today will be on the first two categories. Let's begin with substitutional alloys. These are homogeneous mixtures where the solute atoms replace the solvent atoms within the solid structure. Imagine it as a game of musical chairs at the atomic level. This substitution leads to fascinating changes in the alloy's properties. Moving on, we encounter interstitial alloys. In these alloys, the solute atoms don't replace the solvent atoms but instead occupy the interstitial spaces, those tiny holes between the solvent atoms. This unique arrangement adds a new dimension to the alloy's characteristics. Now, before we proceed, let's clarify a key term homogeneous mixtures. These are mixtures in which the components are uniformly dispersed, creating a consistent composition throughout. In the world of alloys, such mixtures are known as solid solutions. Think of these solutions as a harmonious blend of atoms, each playing its part in creating a unique material. So, remember, we're about to explore the intricate dance of atoms within alloys, and how their arrangement leads to remarkable properties. Are you ready? Let's dive deeper into the world of alloys and solid solutions. Welcome, student. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving into the captivating world of semiconductor conductivity and the intriguing concept of doping. In our exploration of n-type conductivity, we learned how even minute amounts of dupants can cause a tremendous increase in conductivity. Now, let's shift our focus to p-type conductivity. Just like in the n-type case, tiny amounts of p-type dupants, often measured in parts per million, can also lead to a dramatic surge in conductivity. However, there's a fascinating twist here. In p-type conductivity, it's the holes within the valence band that take center stage in the conduction process show figure 12.31 c these holes play a crucial role in facilitating the flow of electric current but how does this all tie into practical devices well the point where an n-type semiconductor meets a p-type semiconductor gives birth to a plethora of essential electronic components this junction forms the foundation for diodes transistors solar cells and a host of other devices that power our modern world so Let's continue our journey into the intricacies of semiconductors and the amazing world of electronic devices. Welcome back, dear. Greetings, eager learners. Today, we're venturing into the realm of redox reactions and the captivating world of electrochemical cells. Redox reactions, short for reduction oxidation reactions, are at the heart of many chemical processes. These reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one substance to another, resulting in changes in their oxidation states. Yes, electrons, the tiny particles that orbit atomic nuclei, hold the key to these transformations. Now, imagine harnessing this electron dance to create useful devices. Enter electrochemical cells. These devices convert chemical energy directly into electrical energy or vice versa. Batteries, which power everything from our smartphones to electric vehicles, rely on precisely this principle. Within a battery, redox reactions occur to produce a flow of electrons, generating a steady stream of electrical power. And it doesn't stop there. Electrochemical cells also play a vital role in electrolysis, a process that drives the separation of compounds using electrical currents. This process finds applications in everything from metal refining to water purification. So, as we journey through the intricacies of redox reactions and electrochemical cells, remember that these processes are at the heart of many technologies shaping our modern world. Greetings. E Welcome back, bright minds. Today, let's explore the fascinating interplay between kinetic and potential energy within the realm of chemical reactions. But first, a quick refresher. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion 
while potential energy is stored energy that results from an object's position or condition. Now, how do these concepts apply to chemical reactions? Well, chemical reactions involve a dance of atoms and molecules, and within this dance, energy transformations occur. As reactants transform into products, energy changes take place. These changes involve the shifting balance between kinetic and potential energy. What's intriguing is that much of this energy is associated with the electrostatic interactions happening at the atomic level. Picture atoms rearranging themselves, electrons shifting positions, and bonds forming and breaking. All of these processes involve changes in energy. So, as we continue our exploration of energy and chemical reactions, keep in mind that these intricate changes within molecules are what give rise to the energy that powers our world. Stay curious as we journey further into the depths of energy transformations. Welcome back. Hello, students. Today, we're embarking on a journey through the fascinating evolution of LED technology. LEDs, or light-emitting diodes, have been a crucial part of the lighting industry for decades. Did you know that red LEDs were the pioneers in this field? However, to produce white light efficiently, a breakthrough in blue LED technology was essential. The first prototype of a bright blue LED was showcased in a Japanese laboratory in 1993. Now, let's explore how this innovation transformed the lighting landscape. Hello, students. Welcome back, students. Today, we're going to delve into a fascinating topic that truly highlights the incredible influence of innovation in our world. The impact of the blue LED innovation was nothing short of astonishing. In less than 20 years from the demonstration of the first bright blue LED, the market witnessed an incredible transformation. By the year 2010, the worldwide sales of blue LEDs had exceeded $10 billion. This rapid rise showcases the significance of technological advancements and how they can shape entire industries. So, let's dive into the details and uncover the remarkable journey of blue LEDs. Welcome back, students. Let's explore the broad range of applications that LEDs have found their way into. Today, LEDs come in a plethora of colors, enabling their use in a multitude of devices. From barcode scanners to traffic lights, LEDs have become an integral part of our everyday lives. An important aspect that sets LEDs apart is their ability to emit minimal heat, and they can be designed to be incredibly small. This quality, coupled with their energy efficiency, has led to LEDs gradually replacing traditional incandescent and fluorescent light bulbs in various applications. Let's explore the broad... As we near the end of our exploration, Let's recap the incredible journey of LED technology. Starting with red LEDs, we've witnessed the evolution that led to the crucial development of blue LEDs. The speed of this transformation, the massive global impact, and the science underpinning it all have showcased the potential of human innovation. The widespread use of LEDs, from diverse applications to energy-efficient lighting, has redefined our world. Remember, advancements like these remind us of the boundless possibilities when science, technology, and creativity converge. As we near the end of Welcome, students, to our discussion on polymers. Fascinating substances with wide-ranging applications. Let's start by understanding what polymers are. Polymers are long chains, or networks of repeating units called monomers. One such intriguing polymer is silicone. It's composed of a unique chain alternating between silicon, C and oxygen, O atoms. What makes it even more interesting is that each silicon atom is accompanied by two carbon groups, often CH3 groups. This molecular arrangement gives silicone its exceptional properties. It's highly resistant to water and remains inert in normal conditions, making it ideal for various uses. Imagine, this polymer serves as both a sealant and a medical material. Now, let's delve deeper into how these properties find applications in real-world scenarios. Welcome, student. All right, dear students. Let's explore the exceptional characteristics of silicone in more detail. One of the remarkable features of silicone is its impressive resistance to water. This means that when silicone is exposed to water, it doesn't absorb or degrade. This property is particularly valuable in sealant applications where a material's ability to keep water out is crucial. 
Moreover, silicone's inert nature under normal circumstances means that it remains stable and unreactive, which makes it a safe and reliable option for various medical applications. This is why silicone finds its way into the field of medicine, even being used in procedures like reconstructive or cosmetic surgery, such as breast implants. All right, dear Let's dive deeper into the world of medical applications for silicone, students. The unique properties of silicone make it a go-to choice for crafting various medical devices. One noteworthy application is in the field of reconstructive and cosmetic surgery. Take breast implants, for instance. These implants, which are used for both reconstructive purposes and cosmetic enhancements, can be crafted using silicone. The pliable and biocompatible nature of silicone makes it an ideal material for creating implants that can resemble natural tissue. This contributes to both the aesthetics and the safety of such medical interventions. As we continue our exploration, remember how the distinctive characteristics of silicone enable advancements in medicine and various other sectors. Let's dive deep. As we near the end of today's lecture, let's recap the fascinating journey we've taken through the world of silicone. We began by understanding the structure of silicone, a polymer composed of alternating C and O atoms with carbon groups attached. This unique arrangement grants silicone its remarkable water resistance and inert nature, making it invaluable in applications ranging from sealants to medicine. Beyond medical uses, silicone's versatility extends into various industries, thanks to its exceptional properties. As technology advances, who knows what innovative applications we might discover for silicone. So, students, keep your curiosity alive for the world of polymers holds endless possibilities. That concludes our exploration for today. Thank you for your attention. As we near the Hello again, young minds. Today, we're going to dive into the fascinating world of polymers. Now, let's build a strong foundation by clarifying what polymers truly are. Polymers are large molecules made up of smaller units called monomers. Think of them as a chain of building blocks. Common examples include polyethylene and PVC. But here's the truly exciting part. Polymers are all around us. From plastic bottles to rubber gloves, polymers play a pivotal role in our daily lives. So, let's keep our curiosity ignited as we explore the amazing world of polymers together. Hello again, young- Alright, let's dive into the heart of the matter, interactions between polymer chains. These interactions can be classified into two types. Intramolecular forces, which involve within a single polymer chain. And intermolecular forces, which are the relatively weaker attractions between different chains. Imagine the strength of covalent bonds within a single chain. Like the links in a chain that hold it together. On the other hand, the intermolecular forces are more like magnets. Pulling different chains together. Alright, let's. Great job keeping up, students. Now, let's see how these interactions affect the physical properties of polymers. The strength of intermolecular forces can make a polymer rigid and solid, like a plastic spoon. Conversely, weaker intermolecular forces lead to flexible polymers, such as the material in a rubber band. This variation in properties is essential for creating a wide range of products that suit different needs. Great job keeping up. We've covered quite a bit today, haven't we? You've learned about polymers and their monomers. The forces that bind them together within and between chains. And how these forces impact their physical properties. Remember, polymers are all about chains of molecules working together. And the way they interact defines their behavior. So, as you step into the world, take a look around. You'll see the fingerprints of polymer science in countless items you encounter daily. We've covered quite a bit. Good day, students. Today, we're embarking on a fascinating journey through the realm of solid materials and their pivotal role in modern technologies. Imagine a world where the materials we use in everyday technologies are mostly solids. From magnets that power airplane turbines to semiconductors that form the heart of solar cells and LEDs, and even polymers that safeguard our products and find applications in biomedicine. But have you ever wondered how these incredible materials come to be? Well, that's where chemists come into play. 
They're the driving force behind discovering new materials and finding innovative ways to process natural substances, transforming them into materials with remarkable properties. These properties can range from electrical and magnetic traits to optical, catalytic, and mechanical qualities. Now, let's delve deeper into the captivating realm of solid materials, exploring their structures and the incredible role they play in shaping our technological landscape. Good day, students. Welcome back, students. As we delve deeper into the realm of polymers, let's explore their significance in living organisms. Polymers are the fundamental building blocks of various living structures. Starting with plants, we encounter starch and cellulose. Starch serves as a crucial energy storage molecule within plant cells, providing the energy plants need to grow and develop. On the other hand, cellulose forms the sturdy framework of plant cell walls, imparting strength and rigidity. Now, turning our attention to both plant and animal kingdoms, we encounter proteins. These versatile molecules are responsible for a wide array of functions, ranging from catalyzing chemical reactions to providing structural support. The diversity and complexity of proteins allow them to carry out essential roles in every living organism. So, let's move on to understanding how these high molecular weight structures are formed. Welcome back. Hello again, students. Now, let's unravel the mystery behind the formation of polymers through the process of polymerization. Polymerization is the fascinating mechanism through which monomers, molecules with relatively low molecular weights, join together to form complex, high molecular weight structures known as polymers. This joining process involves the creation of strong covalent bonds between the monomers, resulting in a continuous chain-like structure. This concept is best understood through examples. Consider polyethylene, a common plastic, formed by linking ethylene monomers. Similarly, in the realm of biology, proteins are synthesized when amino acid monomers link together. So, remember, it's the intricate process of polymerization that enables the creation of these significant molecular entities. Hello again, st Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of polymers and their evolution over time. Our journey begins with a look at natural polymers like wool, leather, silk, and natural rubber. These materials have been used throughout history for various purposes. However, in the past few decades, an exciting development has taken place. Chemists have unlocked the ability to create synthetic polymers by polymerizing monomers through controlled chemical reactions. This advancement has opened up a vast array of possibilities for creating new and useful materials. One key aspect to note is that many synthetic polymers have a backbone made up of carbon-carbon bonds. The exceptional strength and stability of carbon-carbon bonds allow these polymers to possess remarkable properties. Let's move on to the next topic to explore this process in more detail. Welcome back, dear Hello again, dear students. Now, let's dive deeper into the process of polymerization and the crucial role of carbon-carbon bonds. Polymerization is the method through which individual monomers are linked together to create large chains known as polymers. What's remarkable is that many synthetic polymers feature a backbone composed of carbon-carbon bonds. Why carbon? Well, carbon atoms possess an extraordinary ability to form robust and stable bonds with one another. This bonding prowess gives rise to the strength and durability that synthetic polymers exhibit. From this basic concept, a world of possibilities emerges, allowing scientists to craft an incredible variety of polymers with diverse properties. Let's proceed to our next topic to explore some specific examples. Hello again, dear Hello once again, dear students. Today, we're delving into the realm of plastics, a ubiquitous and versatile material in our modern world. Plastics, my eager learners, are a type of polymeric solid. Now, what does that mean? Think of them as materials made up of long chains of repeating units, called polymers. These polymers can be shaped into all sorts of forms, and how do we achieve this? Through the magic of heat and pressure. The next time you come across a plastic item, be it a toy, a water bottle, or even parts of your gadgets, remember that it all starts with these raw materials being molded to the desired shape. And here's the fascinating part. 
There's not just one type of plastic. Oh no, there are many. So, buckle up, as we explore the captivating world of plastics and their various types. Hello once again. Greetings, young minds. Now that we've laid the foundation of plastics, let's zoom in on the incredible variety within the plastic family. Imagine, there's a plastic for every purpose, each with its distinct characteristics and capabilities. Picture this. A plastic designed for durability might not have the same properties as one chosen for its flexibility. To keep things organized, these plastics are categorized by abbreviations like PET, HDPE, PVC, and many more. These letters stand for the specific type of plastic used. For instance, PET stands for polyethylene terephthalate, which you often find in your favorite water and soda bottles. HDPE, or high-density polyethylene, is known for its sturdiness, making it ideal for containers that hold detergents or milk. PVC, or polyvinyl chloride, is remarkable for its versatility and is used in everything from pipes to clothing. So, remember, the next time you come across a plastic object, its specific properties are determined by the type of plastic it's made from. Greetings, young Ahoy, curious minds. Today's lesson is about more than just the finished product. It's about the journey of creation itself. Let's journey into the realm of plastic formation, where we'll uncover the science behind it all. Remember those polymers we talked about earlier? Well, they're built from smaller units called monomers. Imagine these monomers as building blocks, and when they link together in a specific pattern, voila, you've got yourself a polymer chain. This process, my dear students, is known as polymerization. But wait, there's more. Sometimes, these chains can link in various ways, forming a complex network called cross-linking. This cross-linking adds strength and durability to the plastic. So, in essence, plastics aren't just random shapes. They're the result of intricate chemical processes that bring order to chaos. Keep these insights in mind as we journey further into the captivating world of science and creation. Ahoy, curious. Good day, students. Today, we're diving into the intriguing world of thermoplastics and the art of recycling. Our journey begins with an exploration of thermoplastics, a fascinating class of polymers. Unlike other plastics, thermoplastics have a unique property, they can be reshaped. Think of plastic milk containers as a prime example. These containers are crafted from a thermoplastic polymer called polyethylene. What's exciting is that these containers can be melted down, allowing us to recycle the polymer for various other purposes. Now, if you've ever looked at the bottom of a plastic container, you've likely noticed a recycle symbol along with a number. Take a look at figure 12.34 for reference. This symbol holds valuable information. The number and letter abbreviation beneath it provide insights into the type of polymer that the container is composed of. Refer to table 12.5 for a summary of these polymer types. These symbols play a crucial role in sorting containers based on their composition. As a general rule, the lower the number, the easier it is to recycle the material. So, Let's journey further into the intricate world of thermoplastics and recycling, shall we? Good day, students. Welcome back, students. Let's delve deeper into the realm of thermoplastics and polyethylene. Polyethylene, the star of our show, is a prime example of a thermoplastic polymer. This means it possesses a remarkable quality, the ability to be reshaped. Now, let's consider a practical application of this concept. Plastic milk containers that many of us use daily are crafted from polyethylene. This polymer is chosen for its unique properties. It can be melted down and reshaped, allowing manufacturers to create these familiar containers. Imagine the possibilities that arise from this reshaping ability. To get a clearer picture, take a look at the molecular structure of polyethylene in the accompanying image. Welcome back, students. Let's continue our exploration, dear students. We're now diving into the intriguing world of recycling symbols and what they reveal. If you've ever wondered about those symbols at the bottom of plastic containers, you're in for a treat. These symbols, such as the one in figure 12.34, hold valuable information. The number within the symbol, accompanied by a letter abbreviation, gives us insights into the specific polymer used to create the container. These symbols are our keys to understanding the composition of plastic items. 
By using these symbols, we can sort and categorize containers based on the type of polymer they're made from. Remember, the lower the number in the symbol, the easier it generally is to recycle the material. These symbols play a crucial role in promoting effective recycling practices. Let's continue our ex- Welcome to a new dimension of knowledge, students. Today, we're delving into the world of recycling and its significant impact on sustainability. Recycling is a process that breathes new life into materials, and it holds immense benefits. As we recycle plastics like polyethylene, we contribute to reducing waste and conserving precious resources. Think about it. Instead of discarding plastic milk containers, we can melt down the polyethylene and repurpose it for other applications. This process aligns perfectly with the principles of sustainability, ensuring that we make the most of the materials available to us. Through recycling, we're taking steps towards a more environmentally conscious approach to consumption. See the recycling process come to life in the image on this topic. Welcome to a new dim- It's time to wrap up our exploration, students. But before we do, let's solidify our understanding of the connection between recycling numbers and the recycling process. Remember, those numbers within the recycling symbols? They tell us about the kind of polymer used in a container's construction. And here's the golden rule. The lower the number, the simpler it is to recycle the material. This understanding helps us make informed choices when it comes to waste disposal. By recognizing the recycling numbers, we can contribute to efficient recycling practices and promote a greener world. Keep this knowledge in mind as you encounter plastic items in your daily lives. It's time to 